RJ, let's say, you know, you're on the investor side here. Someone great, come to agreement, project's going to be X, you know, what would you suggest to the investor as far as just keeping an eye and pulse of the project, right? As a contractor, you don't want someone there every day looking over your shoulder, but you know, people can get burned if they're not tuned into what is going on there. So putting like your investor hat on, what would you recommend to someone going through their first rehab? Just what level of involvement they should have as far as either being on site calls or whatever checkpoints you think are necessary. Sure. Um, I would, the number one thing is just make sure um, the contractor is living up to expectations. And when I say that, I'm thinking about very specifically, they're showing up at the job site every day. You know, what are the timelines? What are the expected timelines? What What's the schedule they gave me? And are they staying true to that schedule? Um, don't be the guy that's pulls out a chair and sits and watches and critiques every single thing. I've, I've had that happen where somebody has done everything short of uh, making popcorn and, Mm -hmm. and watching us, but you know, they ask what's going on with that. What's going on with that. What's going on with this. And it's like, uh, those are all touch up items. We got to finish everything else first, but anyway, uh, I digress. Um, So, that's where the relationship with your contractor really comes key, right? Checking in job site every day, if it's very easily accessible, if it's not, you know, every couple of days, at least get pictures from your contractor. That's what people love about me. And I found that inadvertently, they say, you're very communicative. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, you send me a picture every week. I'm like, yeah like once a week, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, sure. I, I show you the process, but I mean, sometimes I even do it uh, more often than that, but significant stages in the project, you, you know, maybe you could ask your contractor if he says, Oh, we finished countertops today. You could say, Oh, can you take a picture for me and take a picture, send it to you. Or we're going to start bathrooms tomorrow should be done by the end of the week. Great. Can you send me some progress pics? Um, some of the biggest items that you really have to watch out for when you're new is be there not so much during the demo process, but when everything's down, when all the walls are down, make sure your contractors aren't covering up things and hiding things, right? Um, because A, they don't know how, or uh, B, they mess something up and they're trying to hide it before they leave, um, that's something that actually happened, Mark, um, with a client that you recommended. You know, we, we gutted the bathrooms and it's an old hundred year old brick building. And we took down the walls, the bricks were falling apart. They were actually loose, even on the sill, they were like coming off. And, you know, as, a, as a, as a consultant, I said, well, I gotta let, I gotta let the client know, you know, the client may be upset because he has timelines, but I got to let him know because I'm not going to cover this up without consulting him, letting him know, let him make the choice. That's sort of a mantra in our, in our company, let the client make the choice. We're having a problem with um, moisture and covering it up. Let the client make the choice. Don't just cover it up. Say, this is what's happening. These are some fixes I can, or I can, or I do not have the capabilities. It's going to delay your timelines, but please make the choice. 